video in my series on playing health. This was all inspired by a Violin Geek podcast episode I put out earlier in the summer. And in this particular video, I'm going to be focusing on the neck, the shoulders and the upper back, which are definitely all common places for us to experience tension and perhaps even pain. Hopefully again, not related to playing our instruments, but just in day-to-day -day life. It's just such a common area for people to be experiencing some tension. The previous video, if you haven't checked it out, I focused on the arms and the hands. And the next video, I'll be focusing more on the spine and the low back and the lower body. So let's get started with um, just some shoulder rolls. So again, just easy warm ups that can feel like, oh, that's not going to do anything. But how often do we actually roll out our shoulders? So I'm just going to roll one shoulder first. And let this be like a full body movement. So you're gonna bend into your knees a little bit. Just feel like the whole body is moving your shoulder up and back and around and down. You can go as slow as you want or fast as you want. When we go slow, we can really focus on all the little details and really determine what's comfortable for us. And then going faster is nice and just sort of increase the energy and circulation. So both are good. But oftentimes, just like when we're playing our instrument, we have to kind of go slow first to go fast. We have to know what we're doing. And then I'm going to do the opposite shoulder. And keeping my, my neck and my head soft with this too, I think <clears throat> that full body sort of attention to this motion can kind of sometimes forget the head. <laughs> it's like there's the body and the head. And we definitely don't want to be holding our, our neck or our head tight and stiff. Changing the pace as it feels comfortable to you. And then let's go the opposite direction, rolling the shoulder up and around. In the last one, we did those shoulder kind of arm, arm circles, and those were also addressing the shoulder, but these ones I find can get a little bit more. We can feel the upper back and the pectoral muscles in the front a little bit more, and then we can do both together. And this one as well, just make it a full body motion. Make sure you're not holding any body part stiff. If your head wants to bob back and forth, that's fine. Let's circle around the opposite direction. And just letting the arms be soft and heavy. So then the trapezius muscle is a muscle that attaches up to the occipital sort of base of the skull region in our neck and travels down out, kind of fans out to our shoulders in the back and then down our back. And oftentimes, it gets really tense along sort of that ridge along the top of our shoulder. And this is an area that we definitely, we've, we felt before, right? We might have um, tried to massage it out this way, you know, kind of squeezing that area. And I've tried so many different things over the years from other people massaging me to using that tennis ball against the wall or on the floor to try and get into some of those spots. And it's all been, moderately helpful, but this next one is the one that I have found to be the most beneficial for that particular spot. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take an opposite hand, you wanna use a few fingers, not just one finger, but I'm gonna find maybe the most painful spot. You might have to kind of palpate around. And uh, for most of us, it's sort of maybe right at the base of the neck, kind of as we start to move out towards the shoulder, maybe it's a little bit in, in behind us or um, out towards the, the edge of the shoulder. But in any case, if you can just find a really good spot that you feel like, yeah, that's a good ouch, then you're going to wanna to take your head and stretch it away. So I'm keeping pressure on the spot and I'm stretching my head away to the opposite shoulder or perhaps a little bit in front of me. And I'm gonna keep my head moving just like we did with the previous trigger point massage of the forearms in the other video. And I might shake my head a little bit side to side, but as I do this, I can feel the muscle moving underneath my fingertips and I can feel it stretching. And just 
bringing some motion back into that area that's maybe been a little stiff and tense. Those muscles that just aren't sliding by each other, the muscle fibers that just aren't letting go of their contraction so well, maybe. But yeah, just finding some different angles that feel good. Just moving slowly and making sure that I'm breathing. The breath is great for alleviating tension. It's just amazing. It's like, I'm just sort of release so much. <laughs> we just let it go with the breath, right? But then when I'm done, it's just, it's to me, it feels like this whole side of my neck is just almost like it's longer. <laughs> my head is almost feeling like it's to the side, you know, and now this side feels like extra stiff. So the side that I haven't worked on yet. So it's really interesting. You could do that several in several different points. You could just do it in one point. Again, if you don't, if you're strapped for time, if you can just find maybe the point that feels the best in that moment, and then a lot of the other spots will kind of take care of themselves. But um, if I do one that's close to my neck, then oftentimes I might work out and find one that's a little further away. And so when it's one that's that's maybe almost out to kind of um, the edge of the the clavicle there, the collarbone, then um, I might stretch my head away a little bit to the opposite shoulder like I did with the previous spot, but I also might, rather than just kind of moving the head, I might actually keep the head steady and I might kind of roll my shoulder a little bit and I can feel all the muscles under that, under that spot that I'm holding moving as I go. I might change the head angle and then just, you know, kind of keep moving the shoulder a little bit. But I find that that's a little bit more helpful. I can really kind of get into that spot a little bit better with some shoulder motion if it is closer to the shoulder. But that's a good one. Rolling right over the spot. <laughs> yes. That will do the trick for sure. Yeah, and it doesn't have to take long. A few minutes. Release that gently. Yeah, now it feels like this whole shoulder is dropped lower than my other shoulder. I think it is actually. <laughs> Great, okay, we better balance out. So let's find another spot on the opposite side. Yeah, oh, that's a good one. Um, for me, it's a little bit further back. The other side was kind of right at the base of my neck, sort of right along that shoulder ridge. This one is coming back a little bit more towards that angle in the scapula about midway between the neck and the scapula, actually. Yep, that's a good one. It makes sense, supporting the violin, viola on the side, playing cello, that kind of thing. We would tend to probably have more musculature kind of behind us more on that side versus on the bow side. So anyhow, to really access this one, I'm gonna probably have to come a little bit more forward, so kind of like I'm nodding forward with my head and then I can play around with that spot. This is a lot on the fingertips. So, I mean, if it's too much, you can always get one of those, they call them a Theracane. I find just massaging with a Theracane is a bit rough, but if you're just holding a spot and doing this, it can be okay. It's sort of like, almost like a little cane that hooks over your shoulder. So don't feel like you know, you have to hurt your fingers in effort to to alleviate any shoulder issues. It's you can definitely use tools if it's if it's helpful. Yeah, this one's a little harder. I really have to nod forward to access it appropriately, but it's it's doable. Some nice deep breaths always helps. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, now I feel like my head is a balloon and it's floating <laughs> above my body. It feels good. Let's go out further and maybe find one more spot. I'm looking out further, kind of more towards the back of my body as well on this side and definitely finding some stuff. Yeah, in front is not so much on this left side. So let's find kind of the best spot here and then take my head over to the opposite shoulder and roll out a little bit. I'm gonna feel the stretch first and then start moving and exploring. How does this feel? 
It's like these little muscle fibers that have been tense. We're just kind of waking them up, getting them to slide by each other again. And all the while, of course, putting our body, our head and our neck through some positions, a range of motion that it might not be doing every day. So that's helpful as well. All right. So hopefully feeling balanced. Sometimes I end up having to go back to the other side because I start to get kind of sensitized to what's going on and I notice, oh gosh, now I feel like there's something there and I go right to the spot. So it's really amazing. We can become quite body aware and of course that's gonna help us with our playing as well if we're very aware of what's going on with our body all the time. All right, maybe do a couple more shoulder rolls, shoulder drops, just sort of smooth that out a little bit. So now this next one I love for this issue many of us have in modern life where our head is just always kind of forward. We have this kind of like turtleneck scenario and it's caused by just everything we're doing in front of us in life. We're looking down at a phone, we have these big fluffy pillows, we're typing, we're driving, you know, we're coming forward to meet the chin rest on our instrument we're playing another instrument, guitar or something like that, or piano, we're looking down, you know? So then we get to the point where, you know, some people, we can't even like lie on the floor without a pillow. Like our head is just floating above the floor and it's just not natural. So I really like this one because it takes those muscles in the back of the neck and it pulls them back into position so that our cervical spine, our neck, the, the bones in our neck can just pull back into their natural curvature. So for this one, it can be a little hard if you're to the point where if you take your shoulders against the wall, you can't physically take your head and touch the wall with the back of your head. If that's the case, then you can just step away a little bit with your shoulders. So there's maybe an inch or so away from the wall. We will all be stepping away from the wall in a moment, but just adjust for you for now. And then we're going to just get our heels against our wall, against the wall, the hips against the wall, the shoulders against the wall, and ideally the back of the head against the wall. So you're gonna wanna just kind of take that chin back, almost like you're gonna give yourself a double chin there. And then when you feel like you're lined up, so essentially your ears are over your shoulders, if we were looking from the side. Once you're lined up, you're going to Step away, this is gonna be a head plank, is what I call it, and just the back of your head is gonna be against the wall supporting your body weight. And we're only gonna step ahead, maybe a foot at most, and then you're just gonna hang out here. You're gonna make sure that chin stays tucked so that you have that nice posture in your upper body. Suck the belly in, roll out the shoulders, Take a nice deep breath and just keep breathing. You just want to soften your gaze because we're going to be hanging out here for about a minute. And don't grab a phone. Just you really want to just isolate those muscles that you're now going to be feeling along either side of your spine, your cervical spine. And you're going to feel like they're working. And I just kind of keep pressing the back of your head into the wall. You start to feel like you're getting tired. You can feel free to come out of it when you need to. But we're strengthening up those muscles so that they start to pull the neck back into position. And sometimes it's the muscles in the front of the neck that are the problem. There's an imbalance. The muscles in the front of the neck are too tight and the muscles in the back of the neck are too weak. So we're gonna do something in a moment to help balance that out a little bit. But first we just kind of need to get these guys stimulated in the back of the neck here. And to come out of it, you just want to gently step backwards towards the wall, come away from the wall. And <laughs> I love this sensation. It feels like my head is a balloon again, but now it's like being pulled back behind me. And it's, it's the strangest but coolest feeling. <laughs> 
And it just it gives you that nice posture that we all should have for sure. Standing up nice and tall, you might gain an inch in your height. So then the muscles that are sometimes the culprit here for pulling the head forward, pulling the neck forward, are called the sternocleidomastoid. And these are the muscles that you can see, maybe if we turn our head to the side, they go from the base of the skull, kind of on the side here, down to the clavicle, down to the collarbones. And to get into them, we wanna be careful with muscles that are in the front of our neck. But these ones, you can just kind of pinch down. You might have to kind of take your head a little bit to the side you're working on and pinch down. And if you find a good spot, then I like to roll on that spot. Just kind of pinch that spot and roll on it. These are muscles that can sometimes create headaches on the side of our head and in our ear and our jaw. So if you're feeling some referred pain when you're doing this into those areas, that's completely normal and will go away when you stop. Just don't overdo it. And I just, yeah, find some little spots here. I'm on my right side right now, so I'm bound to maybe find a few more on this side than the other side, given that I am turning my head to the side so much to reach my, my chin rest. But yeah, these are good ones uh, in combination with the head plank to just get everything kind of back in balance, balance out these, these different muscle groups. All of our muscles work together. And then I might do the other side. Just first kind of doing an overall palpation, finding some good spots. There's a good one. Oh, yeah, this one goes all the way up to my temple. Ouch. <laughs> so again, breathing. And you don't have to go the full way with, you know, if you're feeling an ouch, if you're feeling some pain, you don't have to just you know go full full throttle on it or anything yeah that was a good one uh, I'm just gonna move around a little bit yeah seemed like that was mostly oh, a little bit higher some good spots yeah kind of right in the middle of this sternocleidomastoid on this left side is where I'm finding a little bit of interesting sensations Yeah, it almost is like a brain rush or something after doing some of these exercises. We feel like a little spaced out or something. It's, we're bringing so much more blood and energy into our brain <laughs> physically and mentally and emotionally. Yeah, we're going to feel hopefully a lot better really soon. So let's move down the back a little bit. Let's go into some shoulder squeezes. So with these ones, let's just bring the hands out in front of us and then let's take the head of the arm bones back into the shoulder socket, sort of like we're a sewing machine. And then once we're there, let's go ahead and let's squeeze the shoulder blades behind us. And let's just pulse on that like 10 times. Right now, my elbows are close to shoulder height. It's pulsing on those. activating sometimes here I feel some little kind of adjustments to different thoracic vertebrae and that's fine little pops and stuff so yeah the reason why I'm doing that kind of sewing machine move at first is just because a lot of times what we might do with that exercise is this and then the the head of the arm bones kind of like falling forward and it's not really addressing those particular muscles so you definitely want to feel that it's the muscles right between the scapula and the spine so the the shoulder blade and the spine that are pumping when you do those exercises so i like that and then you can do the same little sewing machine exercise but bring your hands down a little bit sort of like you're sitting in a nice comfy chair and then do the same thing pumping Maybe 10 times, more if you like. This one I feel like it's addressing the muscles a little bit further down the back. Still those, we call them the rhomboids, sort of connect to from the spine to the edge of the shoulder blades. And so that's nice. This is really good for posture and it's sort of opening up the chest. 
And then I might go into kind of like a, a W kind of position here and maybe take my elbows a little bit further in front of me, take the head of the arm bones back, and now the elbows back as well, and then I'm going to take and squeeze my elbows down sort of into a V shape down behind me, and that's getting that very bottom edge of like that trapezius muscle and stuff. Make sure my head is remaining loose, I'm not getting tense, I'm not holding my breath, but I'm just gonna pulse on that again several times. This is really great for posture and just kind of rebalancing those muscles from front to back because it's also stretching out those pectoral muscles in the front that, again, with day-to-day -day life often get pretty tight and then these back muscles get kind of weak. So that should feel a lot different. We might almost feel like we're falling backwards after all of these exercises. But let's just do a couple others that are just a little bit general. So there is a point if we make a loose fist and we see sort of the webbing on the side, lateral side of our hand underneath our pinky, pinky joint, kind of that crease there, there is a acupressure point called small intestine three. Let me find it on both hands. And these points, Again, we might think small intestine, what does that have anything to do with the neck and shoulders? But um, this point actually is supposedly helpful for opening up the upper, the upper body, the neck and the, the upper body, the, the back. And so you can, you can certainly massage that point, but I kind of like to just knock it, like we did in the other video with those wrist points, just to knock. And so I'll knock with one pinky knuckle against the other point and I'll switch. I'll knock both of those points. It's again, a little bit painful. We can go a little bit lighter if we want, if we need to. I'm just keeping my hands soft and my wrists soft. And just sort of as an overall maintenance and keeping those meridians open, this is a nice one. Might not feel dramatic effects right away, but it is helpful, I think, to kind of smooth everything out. And then similarly with the other knocking exercise, there's some really interesting tingling sensations once I stop. The pain thankfully goes away, but um, yeah, just again, that kind of energy and circulation is moving. And then to keep that going, let's just shake the whole body a little bit. So I'm bouncing a little bit on my heels, making sure that all the joints, including my neck, is just involved in this and just I think we have to appreciate kind of the simplicity of a move like this which we find a lot in the animal kingdom right of course which we are a part of uh, I love watching birds and often after preening for a little bit like kind of working on their feathers they will do this full body fluff and it's it's just it's like this tornado that goes through their body and I'd like to think that they're wringing out tension and they're probably sort of or, or ordering, organizing their feathers. But uh, you'll see that as well with different mammals. Maybe after running, you'll see them just kind of stop like a cat or a dog and just kind of shake their body. And ducks shaking off little water droplets. And I mean, it just, they seem like they really enjoy it. They're just like, whew. So I think we can do that more. We do see athletes do this. Maybe they're getting ready to, to do a race or something. They're kind of jumping around. But yeah, just kind of shaking the whole body, getting the circulation going. And then we can just stop. And at this point, we might feel like the whole body is more alive, more awake, more vital. That's my hope for you anyway. But all of these exercises, you could do them individually or certainly as a set like we've done. And Without all the talking and stuff that I've been doing and explaining, you can probably run through the whole routine here for the neck and the upper back just within maybe 10 or 15 minutes. So I hope this is helpful and please stay tuned for the next video in the series that's gonna focus more on the lower body and the spine. And if you haven't checked out the first video on the arms then, and the hands, please do so. And we'll also have the link to the podcast episode that inspired all of this uh, down below as well. So please check that out and subscribe. 
I hope you have a great day out there and happy practicing.